Hello again, and welcome. It's great for us to be back virtually with you, our parish brothers and sisters, and everyone watching here once more to our worship service at the South Duchess Cooperative Parish. And it's always a great pleasure to be in contact and connection with our congregations, as well as being with them in prayer and with a spirit of hopefulness during this very difficult and unprecedented health emergency that we're living through. Now today is our Palm Sunday service, and Kathy and I plan to be with you next week from Pauling United Methodist Church for our celebration of Easter next week. We are also planning to post a Stations of the Cross program for Holy Week that has been put together and hosted by Pastor Kathy Meyerson, and it will be up on our subscription on YouTube uh, for Good Friday this coming week. And we also plan to prepare a special service that celebrates the love of Christ expressed during the Last Supper as an alternate worship experience until our traditional Holy Communion can again be shared with you together. Let us please continue to pray for our communities, our leaders, and this great country of ours in the battle to protect as many people as possible from the coronavirus during this pandemic. Let us ask God for his protective blessing on all of humankind. Amen. Now let us turn to our altar. Our Lenten altar has been augmented this week. There are two things that have been added. The first is the palm plant, which represents the palm branches that were laid at the feet of Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem. And also in our Lenten altar, we have the crown of thorns. During the crucifixion of Christ, the Romans laid a crown of thorns on Jesus' head to cause him additional pain and also to mock his claim of authority. Our Lenten also altar has now been completed. Please join me in the call to worship, which can be found in the bulletin that was attached to the email which was sent to you. We raise our voices and wave with joyful hope the palms of deliverance of God's people. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Our hearts are filled with expectation as we welcome the coming King. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We receive into the crowded streets of our lives the one who is Savior, not only of us, but of all the earth. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Please join in the hymn number 280, All Glory, Lord, and Honor.
we will now join together in the prayer of confession. O Lord, Lord, who who on on this this day day entered the the rebellious rebellious city that that later rejected rejected you, we confess that our our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's. Our faith can be more show than substance. Our hearts are in need of cleansing. Have mercy on us, Son of David, Savior of our lives. Help us to lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting you to forgive what is sinful to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises, and to receive us as your own. Amen. Our Psalter this morning is from Psalms 118. It can be found on page 839 in your Methodist hymnal. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. There are joyous songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of my Lord. The Lord has chastened me sorely, but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God who has given us light. Lead the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, who is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. The New Testament reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found In human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, 
God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Gospel reading for today is taken from Matthew chapter 21. Jesus enters Jerusalem. And when they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage, the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus directed them, they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our text today is that very reading from Matthew 21. It's the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. This is the Palm Sunday text, and we are focusing on that text, and later we will be celebrating the Passion text, text with other worship. In the book God and Empire, Jesus Against Rome, the author John Crossan made the following statement. It's very important to remember, especially in the light of the ancient and ongoing anti-Judaism feeling to be quite clear that the first Palm Sunday demonstration was not against Judaism as such, not against Jerusalem as such, not against the temple as such, and not against the high priesthood either. It was a protest from the legal and prophetic heart of Judaism against Jewish religious cooperation with imperial Roman control. It was at least for the Christian followers of Jesus, then and now, a permanently valid protest demonstration against any major city's collusion between conservative religion and imperial violence at any time and at any place." End quote. Now, as we reflect on Palm Sunday's meetings today, let's take a different slant. Let's use a medium that we're a little bit more familiar with. Now, most of us either grew up or remember hearing or seeing the news on the radio and the early TV. So let's go back then and pretend that there was such news media back at the time of Jesus. The events of what we now call Palm Sunday might have been reported over those sources, something like this. And now elsewhere in historical news, uh, Dateline 33 AD, 
The city of Jerusalem was overcrowded today with people celebrating the Passover when a protest demonstration was held just inside the city gates near the suburb of Bethany. In an obvious parody of the emperor, a local itinerant preacher and healer is said to have written a jackass into the town where he was greeted with sounds of Hosanna as though he was a conquering general. People were reportedly seen waving palm branches and throwing their cloaks on the road before this mock emperor. The crowd dispersed before authorities could arrive, which is just as well since police were immediately called to respond to a near riot at the Jewish temple in the center of town where an unidentified man was said to have attacked the money changers in an attempt to drive them out of the temple. Sources inside the temple guard said that a certain Nazarene had been identified as the person of interest in both in incidents. A spokesperson for the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, would neither confirm or deny this allegation. And now a word from our sponsor. It might have sounded something like that. But as we think about what happened in Jerusalem that day, we also hear the words of the prophet Zechariah, who was writing about his grief for Jerusalem, his grief for Jerusalem that had fallen in way back when in 400 BC to Alexander the Great, and it had fallen without a fight. He wrote eloquently describing a new and different type of savior, a Messiah that would come from God and enter the city with humility and peace and riding on a donkey. From the Old Testament, Zechariah chapter 9. And Jesus knew. He knew of this Old, Tes Old Testament text. Of course, Jesus didn't call it the Old Testament then. It was part of the Jewish prophecy. And he took those prophetic words as his inspiration when he staged this anti-triumphal demonstration, which mocked conventional thinking and offered the world then a new type of triumph, a new type of king. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was no pious or sanctimonious affair. It was loud, it was raucous, and it was designed to be irreverent and impertinent. And it was dangerous, too. As with any demonstration, one of its purposes was to incite a reaction from the powers that be. It was designed to make a loud point. It was not a benign, it was not a love-in, and Jesus knew it, despite the scene, and despite the praise of his divine glory. He was still in the ministry at that time, he was still teaching us. He was still doing God's work, which was getting so much harder and getting so much more dangerous for him. Those two demonstrations, the donkey parade and driving out the money changers in the temple that Jesus deliberately undertook on that Sunday long ago, were indeed loud and raucous. They were offensive to those who benefited from the status quo at that time. And they challenged all who just assumed that, well, this is the way it is, and it's the way it always will be. Jesus challenged that. Jesus understood the powers of protest. He understood facts about protest like Protest events give visibility to a cause. Protest events demonstrate power, especially the power of the people. Protest events can build solidarity. Remember how solidarity in Poland years back toppled the communist regime? And protest events can build relationships for activism, and for change. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ applied these insights to his demonstration 
against an unholy connection between conservative religion in the form of the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin with the political military oppression tactics of the Roman government. That kind of connection, that kind of marriage of factions must not be tolerated or accepted even today, especially by people who consider themselves to be brothers and sisters and disciples of Jesus Christ. The joys of our hosannas today should be raised with agreement and support of that rebellious demonstration by Jesus so long ago against persecution and oppression on any basis and on any premise. Let us all stay connected with that very spirit of doing the right thing in this society of ours today. And right now we know it's critical to protect our families, to protect our family's health, and to support compassionate leadership that reaches out to help all people who are ill or who are at risk. Brothers and sisters, may our Palm Sunday procession be courageous, full of hope, and fueled by the love of our neighbors, as Jesus has taught us and as Jesus would have us do. Amen. Please join me now in our response hymn, All Praise to Thee, For Thou, O King Divine, in the Methodist hymnal, number 166. to the Savior, we get all excited about the parade into Jerusalem. We gather palm fronds and distribute them among those present so that they can wave them in triumph 
replicating the parade and the crowd. Children sing the praises of Jesus. Adults remove their cloaks and place them on the road in front of the donkey so that he may not make a misstep. We could stay at this, stay at this scene forever and enjoy the moment, but we are being called forward through the gates to the holy city, to the temple, and from the temple to the cross. Be with us and give us courage to face what lies ahead. Strengthen our faith that we will remain steadfast at the time of reckoning. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer, which can be found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 895. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time in our service, it is traditional for us to accept offerings and tithes from our congregation. And I take this opportunity to thank all of you who have continued your stewardship and support of your local churches and encourage you to continue to do the same as we worship in different ways during this health crisis that we are engaged in right now. So please either mail your uh, pledges or your contributions into your church office or make some other arrangement for them to be delivered to your church. So the mission and ministry of your congregation that you are part of may continue. The prayer of offering dedication is taken from Matthew 21. Let us pray. Holy God, sovereign over power and pain, glorious triumph and deep disappointment. We enter this holy week, bringing our tithes and offerings to your altar and leaving them here in the hope that you will send them to make the world a more loving and compassionate place. We are reminded through the scripture that you sent two of your disciples out to make the world ready for your coming, saying, go into the village, find the donkey, and tell them the Lord has need. Remind us that your kingdom breaks into the world not as a spectacle for us to witness, but as a parade where we are called to make a working contribution. We pray this in the name of the one who comes not for just the parade, but for the cross at the end of it. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, in the hymnal number 278.
Lord, just as we have entered Jerusalem with you, be with us in all the Jerusalems we will be facing. Guide our steps. Encourage our hearts. Give us abundant faith to follow you. Amen. Amen.